Technology. Thank you for joining me today. I'm going to take you step by step uh, through the restoration and servicing of a, uh, of a really cool uh, vintage 17 jewel manual wind watch. It's a Croton Buccaneer. Um, these techniques are all uh, techniques that you can you can use um, when you're servicing your own watches, um, especially especially the the very classic um, manual wind style. Usually they're 15 to 17 jewels, um, sometimes seven jewels if it's a little bit lower quality. Uh, hopefully, if you're if you're getting into watchmaking or if you're just curious about it, this will be this will be some useful information for you. Um, the watch we're restoring today, it's the Croton Buccaneer. It's a really cool little uh, men's military style watch. Uh, this is the kind of watch that was definitely worn by uh, military members. It was privately sold, it wasn't directly issued to them, um, but it was. It just had some really nice features on it. Um, it was really, really rugged, very waterproof at the time, um, and just a good all around watch very utilitarian design with a sub second hand and the uh, loomed dial and, and, uh, and uh, minute and hour hands. Um, this also featured a really, really neat feature uh, called the clamshell case. If you're not familiar with the clamshell case, it's similar to uh, a more traditional uh, wristwatch case, but uh, a little bit different in that most wristwatches have a snapback or screw on case back. And the screw on case back is the entire case back screws on to the, to the rest of the case and the bezel. Uh, but this one actually the uh, there are four retaining screws that screw through the case into the case back to kind of seal it down and it's kind of an extra extra feature that's a little bit more collectible today just because they were a little bit more unusual and um, and a little bit harder to come by as you can see the condition is actually not too bad uh, that it's in right now it uh, was ticking I uh, Give it a little wine, a little wine, a little shake. It'll start right up, which is a good sign. Uh, the only thing is, I took a video of the uh, watch on the time grapher earlier, just to give you an idea of how it was running. Um, running too fast, not insanely fast for a watch of this condition in this age, but definitely too fast. Amplitude was too low uh, and the beat error was super high and uh, you don't want a high beat error It's basically the difference between the tick and the talk uh, of the watch So it's you want the equal amount tick to talk that way when you're at different positions with the watch uh, It'll keep more consistent time uh, Whereas if it's a really bad beat error uh, Dial up side might be pretty good might be regulated pretty good maybe keeping time within let's say 10 seconds a day but then when you're wearing it on your wrist, uh, you know, the crown down is, you know, is a position that it's, it's in a lot. And, you know, it may be running three minutes fast per day crown down. So that's a big difference in your quality of timekeeping. Whereas you're going to get a lot closer to that by having a better beat error. So as you can see, um, this watch uh, case is very dirty. Um, the crystal is pretty scratched up. And so we're going to polish that crystal up, uh, ultrasonically clean the case, and um, of course, service the movement. I'm not going to do much to the dial. I don't like doing stuff to dials if I can help it. Um, and since the original loom actually looks pretty cool, it's got a really nice patina to it, uh, we're going to leave that on as well. First things first, um, before I remove a movement from the case, just to make uh, hand removal a little bit easier, I make sure that the hands are overlapping each other uh, in a straight line. If you get a second hand, uh, if the watch, watch isn't ticking, then it's good to get them all lined up. If it is ticking, uh, you'll want to kind of wait until it evens out before you actually get under there with the levers to, to uh, pry off those hands, just because then it, it lessens the risk that you might bend them um, or do other kind of damage to the dial. All right, now with the clamshell case, you've obviously got these little screws that are holding in the uh, case back. So you got to remove those. You want to use some decent downward force when you're unscrewing to uh, prevent slippage. There's no point in scratching the case if you don't need to. When 
there's really grimy stuff like this, I'll use an old grimy Rodico. Uh, it's already pretty gross, but at least it picks up a lot of the kind of junk and gunk uh, off of the screws or parts uh, before you put it into your cleaning machine. And it's better to have it in a junky Rodico than in your cleaning solution, uh, which will basically just mean you got to go through cleaning solution more frequently, uh, which is pretty expensive. And, uh, you know, there's just no point. Use this junky Rodico. Okay, now that we have the screws out, Basically the way this case is designed is that the case pushes up uh, into the bezel here and the crystal actually kind of smushes itself up against the bezel. It's not a, uh, a more common type of, of crystal on these watches is like a friction fit, but this one sort of flares out at the bottom uh, so that it can fit underneath this case. Getting it out requires some force so you're going to have to try to do it as firmly but in a controlled way as possible. You can see that this case has not been removed for a very long time as I'm pushing it out. You can see how much gunk there is and how, how stuck it is in there. Okay, there's that. Pretty gunky in there. Very gunky. Luckily, it looks like it was a pretty good seal, so hopefully, the movement's okay in there. original gasket is very much stuck on there. It's, it's old and pretty crusty. I'm going to see if I have something that'll fit, but unfortunately with these, they're very specific and I don't know if there's a place to source the correct size or not. So I'm going to see if I can find a gasket that'll work, but if not, I'm going to keep this. And believe it or not, I'm going to reuse it, but under the guise of don't get this watch wet. Just to create as good of a seal as possible. So as you can see, this is the old gasket. It's pretty nasty, pretty dried out. Unfortunately, finding a replacement gasket for this specific movement is, at least in my experience, really not possible. You have to try to get lucky and find a rubber gasket of the right size, but sometimes you just need to reuse these uh, and you know make sure that the, the buyer knows that this is not to still be considered a waterproof watch. So you can see here this crystal is really unique, it's very distinct, it's different than most acrylic crystals. This lip here presses up against the inside of the case. And that's kind of where that seal comes from. So we'll give that a polish later after we uh, ultrasonically clean this along with the case. I just use a little piece of plastic. You can use a grocery bag or a part of a Ziploc bag. It tends to work pretty well, actually, for protecting the dial. When you get that second hand, you want it to be really gentle and ease it up because it's very easy to bend that second hand pinion. the movement is ready to be removed. Got a really cool patina on that dial. But obviously that case needs a lot of cleaning. 
Now this is a bit of the tricky part. Uh, as you can see, the stem is in here, the movement's in here. There's obviously no way to get to the movement uh, without removing this stem. So this, is, this has what's called a split stem. And basically it's a two-part stem that is friction fit together uh, pretty strongly. So just in case I were to touch this dial, I'm going to put on some uh, finger tots. Normally when I disassemble a movement, I'm obviously really careful with the dial, but once I'm handling the movement, I don't bother with the cots until everything is cleaned. Just because it's really dirty anyways and you're just about to clean it. But while we take the stem out, since I'll probably end up getting my fingers on the dial at some point, it's good practice to, to be careful. One method to get this off is you could pry it with tweezers. You have to be really careful not to bend it in any kind of way. I don't really like to use the tweezers just because I happen to have this tool. It's actually a dental tool. I don't really know what it's called, but um, it's got these kind of grooved bits here, and I'm sure that there are you know, there's a Bergeon tool specifically for this, I'm sure. I don't know what it would be called, but there's always a tool for everything with them. So what you can actually do to help prevent that crown from flying away is you can actually just use some old Rodico. Junky Rodico is really useful, by the way. Use some old Rodico in there that are basically, it's going to create sort of like a pad against the, against the crown here. So that when you get underneath there, I'm sure you can figure out a way to use this type of little tweezers too. It'll sort of prevent it from flying off. Bingo. There we can go. There we go. That came off smoothly. Now we've got the stem separated. And sometimes I like to push back in that stem since it's in a set position. Just to make it a little easier to get the stuff out of the case. You got a little groove here. You can kind of get up underneath the dial and gently lift out. Bingo. There's the movement out of the case. 